In this video, I'd like us to take a look at some of the basic camera controls that are available in vPython. This uh, set of options allows you to change the perspective in your simulation to make it more visible or to help you emphasize a point or just to make it look plain cooler. Um, in order to give us something to look at, I've made a two by two by two grid of cubes. Um, they're all spaced uh, 20 units apart on each of the axes, so they're all at either x, y, and z equals 10 or negative 10 or some combination thereof. I hit control 2 to run. Uh, that's exactly what I get is this nice little array of cubes. Um, what I want you to start noticing here is that the camera, you've probably noticed this already, but the camera always adjusts based on whatever is there in the scene. So for example here, the camera is moved far back enough, far, uh, far out enough along the positive z-axis so that you can see all of these. So for example, if I take all these tens along the z-axis and make them into ones, uh, the camera is going to zoom back in. It's going to relocate itself so that I can still see everything. See, I'm still just as close to these cubes, meaning the camera has moved inward. We can investigate that a little bit by accessing uh, a couple variables called uh, scene.camera.pause and scene.camera.axis. Um, if I print these, uh, we'll get a look at how the camera's values are changing depending on what we have in the scene. Um, Scene.camera.pause is the location of the camera, so this is where you as the viewer are located inside the 3D environment. And then scene.camera.axis is the direction in which the camera is pointed. So let's hit control 2 to run this. So you see here with my uh, condensed array of cubes, when I make these things closer, uh, the camera is located out at z equals uh, 21 and some change. And you notice that it's pointing in the in the negative z direction. So it's always going to point um, back along into the uh, into the whatever it is we're looking at. But if I put those back out farther, let's uh, return these to their original values of 10 or negative 10. Then that value is going to change. So these are now spread out, and the camera has had to back up to about 31 and a half, and now its axis is along, is at negative 31 and a half. Um, I believe only the magnitude of the, excuse me, only the, the direction of this vector matters, the, the, the change in direction doesn't matter. I don't think that impacts anything, uh, but I, there, there might be something about like the field of view or something that gets impacted as well. But the point is the camera always makes these nice adjustments for us so that we can see the stuff that's in the window. But it might not always give you the view that you want. For example, suppose I wanted this red cube to be in the center of the view. I could move the camera's position. These are variables that I can change manually. So for example, I could change scenes.camera.pause to be a new location. Let's think about this. Uh, that red cube is located at x equals 10 and y equals 10. So let's suppose I change the x and y values of scene.camera.pause to be 10 and 10. So that would move me over to the right 10 and up 10. But I don't really want to change this 31. If I were to change this to a zero, the camera would move into the middle here and I wouldn't be able to see this red cube. So let's leave it at this 31.552. Uh, let's do a copy and paste there. And now what you'll see is that our camera view is going to change. So the camera has moved, as promised, it's moved over to the right and it's moved up. Now, of course, we made that change after we printed this. So the original location was at 0, 0. Now we've moved it to 10, 10, which is pretty neat. But I can also change the camera axis. So, for example, suppose I wanted the camera located in this corner, but I wanted it to stare downward a little bit. Well, we can take this vector for the... Uh, scene.camera.axis. Let's copy and paste those numbers here. And then I can just change, uh, let's see, let's copy and paste this. Scene.camera.axis and equal now this vector. So this is, is the same vector we had before, only now I'd like to move it downward in the y direction. So again, this is the direction the camera is pointing. So this is going to make the camera point downward in the screen. And there you have it. We've got the camera pointing downward. You notice that the, uh, the the top row got cut off because we rotated downwards, but I can zoom out with my scroll wheel to still be able to see that. So now we're looking down uh, as after having been moved to the right upward, now we're looking downward. I can do the same thing with the Z axis as well. Let's suppose I wanted to look 
just a little bit over to the right with my camera view. So now you see I've got the view rotated just a little bit to the right. So if you find that you're conducting a simulation and you, you, the visuals don't quite look right, those are the two main things that you can change. There are some other camera properties that we'll look at in a future video, uh, but these are kind of the, the two basic uh, controls you have as the camera's position and the camera's axis. Now, of course, we can have a little bit more fun with this. Um, let's suppose I wanted to have the camera move during my simulation. Suppose I wanted it to uh, move around in the... Uh, in the field of view. Uh, let's suppose I wanted my camera to move around in a circle. So let's set up a d theta, an angle theta, and we'll set up a loop to make this thing uh, just run continuously. We'll give it a rate statement here. And then we'll, uh, let's say we want to adjust this, the camera's position. So let's say scene.camera.pause equals vector. And let's have this thing go in a circle in the xy plane. Um, I like it being um, out here at 10 because that's the the size of the uh, cubic array we've got here so let's have 10 times cosine of theta for x 10 times sine of theta for y and then for our z let's keep it at this 31 and some change I, I think we're at a good distance there and then of course we need theta equals theta plus d theta so this thing actually moves oh and i need to uh reset these values here so let's just comment those out with control slash and control two to run so here we've got our view starting out over here in the circle and we are moving around in a circle of radius 10 which means we're hitting each one of these blocks uh, as we move along which is nice so this is one way you can control the the way the camera moves around uh, you notice that the that the camera's axis is staying constant we're always staring in the same forward direction i can change that by coming down here and instead of changing scene.camera.pause i can change scene.camera.axis axis uh, let's comment this out at least for now and let's have this thing do the same thing, move around in the X direction, move around in the Y direction, and we'll need to flip this to a negative 31.5552, so it's still looking into the screen. So now what we're doing is we're changing the camera's axis. So we're staying in the same position. Our, our, our scene.camera.pause is not changing, but we're taking that camera and we're pointing it in different directions. So instead of moving the camera around on a circle, we're now tilting the camera around, which gives you a different effect. Um, serves kind of the same purpose, but it's a very different look to it. And of course, I can make an even more wild look by having both of these in place at the same time. Control to run. So here we've got the camera moving and tilting around. Uh, this is now starting to look like some bad uh, hand camera work from an action movie. There is one other trick that you might be interested in uh, that's, that's kind of an easy one to use, and that's the camera.follow option. So if you say scene camera.follow, you can give it an object. Let's suppose we create a ball uh, in this scene. So let's say ball equals sphere, and let's give it a position of zero, zero, and, no, excuse me, 10, zero, zero. There we go. And let's suppose instead of moving the camera, I move the ball around. So let's have the ball.pause equal to vector. Uh, let's have it go around the same way this thing was. Copy and paste. Oh, let's change the z to a uh, to a zero there. Uh, let's double check, make sure this is doing what I think it will by commenting out the scene.camera.follow. Okay, sure enough, the white ball here is moving around in a circle. If I turn on this scene.camera.follow, this is gonna tell the camera, I want you to follow the ball along. If I hit control two, now you see the camera tracks along with the ball. So if you've got an object that's moving around a lot and you want the camera to be able to see where it goes and not have to zoom out or anything, you can just tell the camera to follow that object. Notice that you put that command before the animation loop. It just attaches the camera to that object, which is pretty neat. So these are some basic camera controls that you can use. Like I said, there are some more advanced versions that we will uh, get into in a future video, uh, but this kind of gives you a little bit of control over your camera and your animations. So thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.